Here we have a log graph that has been drawn and they give us a point and they say calculate the value of k. Okay, so that's easy. It's a point on the graph um, and k is just the x and we know that the y is 2. So we can take this original equation and so we know that the y is a 2 but we don't know what k is so we just do that. Now some students do struggle to remember the how to like rearrange a log graph but you start with this number so 4 then you say to the power of this number and that's going to be equal to this number okay and that's going to be k and so that means that 16 is equal to k so k is 16. Now it says determine the values of x for which this graph is bigger than minus 1 and smaller than 2. Okay, so these are y values, minus 1 and 2. So let's quickly go find the y values of 2, which would be here, and minus 1 would probably be here. So they want to know between which x values is the graph in between those. Okay, so if I had to draw dotted lines going across, they want to know where's the graph inside here, in between those two. So if I had to highlight the graph where it's between those, it's there. Can you see? Because inside that area, it's between those two um, red dotted lines, right? So what we need to do is we already know the x value over here. So we know that that x value is 16, because that's what we got in the previous question. Um, but we don't know the x value here but we do know the y value is minus 1. So we can just tell this graph, hey graph, did you know that your y value is minus 1 over there? But can you just tell us what your x value is, please? So now we just reverse everything again. So we say 4 to the power of minus 1 equals to x. And so x would be equal to, sorry, let me not switch that around. Some students panic when I do that. So x would be a quarter. So that means the x value here, whoops, the x value here is a quarter and the y value is minus one. So remember it's in this little area here where the y values are between those two dotted lines because they want the y values to be bigger than minus one but smaller than two. So the answer will be whenever x is bigger than or equal to a quarter but then smaller than or equal to um, 16. So it's whenever the x value is from here up to this x value, okay? Um, if you prefer interval notation, you could say x is an element going from a quarter up to 16 like that. Okay, 6.3, write down the inverse. Now some students get a bit confused between this and this. Okay, so this one is inverse. This one is first derivative, which is part of calculus. Okay, so don't get those confused. Here we, they want the inverse. So to find the inverse, you're just going to write out the original equation. You're then going to switch x and y around. And then you're just going to get the y by itself again. So we're just going to reverse log again. So that's going to be this one to the power of this one equals to this one. And guys, whether I do it that way or that way doesn't really matter okay that's not important but there's the answer um, y equals to 4 to the power of x so remember with inverse step one you just switch the x's and the y's around and then you get the y by itself again and that's it this by the way is an exponential and we should know by now that the inverse of a log graph is an exponential let's quickly write that down a log is the inverse of an exponential and the exponential is the in yeah the vice versa you know what i'm trying to say log exponential um exponential log right now here's one of these questions that just just gives you a headache right <laughs> and if you are a student that is still struggling with these types of questions um you have two options either try to find as many questions like this as you can and master it or just leave them like they're not going to count that much in your test. I mean, this exam, it only counts two. So don't lose sleep over those questions. Um, like 
rather focus on the other areas if you just really, really, really cannot get it. Because I do know a lot of students do really struggle with that. Okay. And even like those questions where they talk about K and roots and oh my goodness, I know guys, I know you guys don't like those. They're really challenging. Okay, but let's give this one a go. I have got a few little techniques I'd like to share with you for this one. So it says, for which value of X will this times this be this? Okay, now let me explain in a very simple way to you guys. Don't look at what they're giving you right now. Let's first go to the very basics, like literally grade four. We're going to go back to grade four right now. They want you to multiply these two things together, and they want the answer to be smaller than zero. So they want you to multiply these two things together to get a negative answer. That's what smaller than zero means. Okay, so what we do is I like to do this. I say, okay, so the two things we're going to multiply together are x and the inverse of x. Actually, I was thinking this question is actually a little bit easier. Check this out. If we go x times the inverse. Now, the inverse we already worked out in the previous question. Y equals to, y equals to 4 to the power of x. So y equals 4 to the power of x. And they want that to be a negative. Now, they sometimes like to ask this in like your normal exams in like question one, for example, they'll be like um, x minus one times three x smaller than zero. And then students struggle because they're like, yeah, but I can't solve this one. It doesn't work. It's giving me an error on my calculator and I can't make this one equal to zero. Guys, you are correct. This thing cannot be solved. It can't be made equal to zero. You can actually try something. You must real or, or realize that this is an exponential and it's a normal exponential. So it's just like your standard exponential that goes up. And even if it goes down, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that no matter what x value you plug into this exponential, it'll always be positive. Always. It'll always be positive. Okay? So what you tell the teachers, you'll say that this 4x is going to be positive for all x values. For, or you can just say for x is an element of r. It's always positive. So if this is always positive, then what must this part be so that when you multiply um, when you multiply these two terms together, you get a negative number because they want it to be smaller than zero. So if this is always positive, then this would always have to be negative. So we can tell them that x must always be negative. So that's your answer actually. x must be smaller than zero.